please remember to mute your microphones. Um, throughout the presentation, uh, we're going to be having a Q&A session um, after the presentation concludes. Um, so if you have a question while we're presenting, uh, please feel free to throw the question in the chat and we will get to it later, I promise. We have our director, Mary Crowell, kind of monitoring the chat here today. Um, so uh, we will get to those questions, um, I promise. Um, so before we kind of get into everything, I would it'd be awesome if uh, the speakers can introduce themselves. I'll go first. Uh, my name is Jacob. I work as a peer advisor in the College of Health Sciences. Um, I've been working with pre-nursing students for about a year and a half now, and I'm also a nursing student myself in the program. Um, so with that, I will pass it over to Candace Johnson. Hello, everyone. My name is Candace Johnson. I'm Student Services Manager in the School of Nursing, and I'm happy to be here. Awesome. Thank you, Candice. And Kelsey Nelson? Hi, good afternoon. My name is Kelsey Nelson, and I'm an embedded career specialist with Boise State Career Services. I work really closely with students in the College of Health Sciences on anything related to jobs and careers. Awesome. Thank you, Kelsey and Candice. All right, let's hop into the presentation. So today, uh, like I said, we're gonna be presenting a whole new holistic admission process workshop uh, for the spring of 22 application cycle. Um, and it includes two phases. Um, so the first part of the presentation is gonna be covering uh, phase one. Um, it's pretty similar to what uh, you all have seen in the past. Um, so we're gonna talk about those pre-requirements um, and then Candace Johnson's gonna go over accessing the application as well as phase two of the uh, application process. We'll talk about the interview and written component of phase two, and then Kelsey will kind of get into some best practices to prepare for the interview. And then at the end, like I said, we will do a Q&A. So phase one of the application process. Um, like I said, it's very similar to what you've seen in the past. I mean, there's two main requirements that you need to meet. That first requirement is that you need to be an admitted Boise State student. Um, all applicants must be Boise State students when they submit their application. The second requirement is all the prerequisites that you need to meet. Those aren't changing, those are staying the same. Um, and please note that there are some classes that uh, must be completed before you apply, while other classes um, can be in progress when you apply. And we'll be touching on that right on this next slide. So I'm sure you all have seen this uh, pre-nursing grid many times. Um, it hasn't changed um, uh, very much recently and it won't change for this application cycle either. Um, what's really important to point out here are the different colors of the courses that are listed here. So the green courses on this grid, uh, those being English 101, English 102, uh, Chemistry 101, or Chemistry 111, Note that if there are two classes listed in a certain box, that means you just need to take one of them. You can pick whether you want to take Chem 101 or Chem 111. You don't need both, you just need to pick one. And we also have Nutrition, Anatomy and Physiology 1, Anatomy and Physiology 2, Psychology 101, and Statistics. Once again, you can take either Math 153 or Math 254. Either one of those will satisfy your requirements uh, for the nursing program. So that green color, what exactly does that mean? That means that you must have these courses completed before you can apply to the program. So you must have a finished grade on your transcript ready to go when you submit your application. So if you are applying in the spring of 22 cycle, you should be taking some of those green classes either this semester or you've already completed them previously. So you need to have all of those green courses completed before you can apply to the program. And then we have our blue courses. These are classes that are a little bit different because you can already have them completed or you can have them in progress when you apply to the program. Oops. Um, so uh, like I said, you can either already have them completed or in progress. So those classes being Bio 205, Pathophysiology, and then uh, one of these sociology options. Once again, you can pick either one of the Social 101, Social 102, Social 230, or Social Work 101. Any one of those four will meet that requirement. So uh, because this can be in progress, that means that you can take these blue courses um, in that spring of 22 semester. So you don't need to have those courses completed before you submit your application. It can be in progress. And then we have our gray courses along the outside. Those are classes that are uh, foundational requirements. So every Boise State student needs to complete them in order to be uh, eligible to graduate, uh, but you don't need to complete them before you apply to the program. So realistically, you could have none of them done. You could have all of them done. It makes no real difference uh, for the application. 
So once again, the green courses, those must be completed this semester, uh, but at least this semester before you apply to the program. The blue courses, those must be either already completed or in progress when you apply to the program. And then our gray courses, um, those foundational requirements, you need to finish them before you graduate. Um, like I said, you can have none of them done. You can have all of them done. It really doesn't matter. And then our GPA requirements uh, for the program are not changing either. Um, so um, you will see these box courses here are the admission courses, um, and they comprise the admission GPA. Um, so those five courses are chemistry, nutrition, anatomy and physiology one, anatomy and physiology two, and statistics. So your grade in those five courses combined makes up that admission GPA, and that needs to be at 3.0 or higher in order to be eligible to apply to the program. Now, there's a couple other GPAs you need to keep in mind, which I will touch on in the next slide. So, uh, the, like I said, those minimum requirements are not changing. We have that admission GPA listed out here, so that needs to be at 3.0 or higher in order to be eligible to apply to the program. And then you must also have a cumulative GPA of 2.5 or above. So that cumulative GPA comprises all the college courses you've ever taken, and that GPA needs to be at 2.5 or above in order to be eligible to apply. And then lastly, you must earn a C grade or higher in all your nursing prerequisite courses. So a C minus does not cut it, it needs to be at C or above um, in order to be eligible to apply. So once again, 2.5 cumulative, 3.0 or higher admission GPA comprises anatomy and physiology one, anatomy and physiology two, chemistry, stats, nutrition, and then a C grade or higher in all of your nursing prerequisite courses. All right, and I am going to toss it over to Candice. And I think Candice, you wanted to share your screen, correct? Um, not quite yet. Okay, you just let me know. Okay. Great. So um, the application for this next cycle opens on January 1st, and the deadline to apply for that application is March 1st. I cannot stress this enough. Please do not wait until the last minute to apply. If you do and you're missing materials, we will not have time to get the materials from you late. By applying early, there's time to fix things. You should, at the point of application, have already turned in your transcripts to admissions. They would require those for admission to the university. So um, you must be admitted to the university before you can do our application. So they should have your transcripts. However, that you have those three courses that you can have in progress. If you have any courses in progress when you apply, you need to get those sent to Boise State Admissions as soon as your grades post so that we have those on file. Next slide. Okay, so you've applied and was granted admission to Boise State University. You've met with your pre-nursing advisor and you're ready to apply to the School of Nursing. Um, Jacob, I am ready to share my screen. Let's see. All right, it's all yours. Okay. So you're going to go to the Boise State um, School of Nursing website, and there will be an orange button that says apply now. Um, I'm not going through all that here because right now the application is not live, so you wouldn't be able to see me get there from here. Um, I have it opened in a private browser so that somebody can't find it and accidentally submit an application. This is what the School of Nursing application looks like. Um, pretty general, as you can see, um, you start, you put, your, you put in your name, email, date of birth. Um, please use your Boise State student email address. This is where you will get all correspondence about the application cycle. If we're missing anything from you, we'll email you at that address. Um, your next steps, everything will come to that address. Um, this is where you put in your Boise State student ID. So as you scroll down through the, um, the general information, please answer it all to, you know, true to the best of your ability. Um, there's a question, have you applied to the School of Nursing before? Um, have you been previously accepted? 
Um, and then also, have you attended a nursing program at another institution? You will need to um, submit a letter of good standing if you've attended an institution or a nursing program at another institution. We will need to see um, that you left in good standing. So you will get that letter from your previous institution and then you will email that to us um, where at nursing admissions at Boise State. Um, so yeah, so general questions. As this section right here, um, if you, it, it's going to ask you if you would like your information forwarded on to um, LCSC if you don't happen to get into the program. Um, so any students that would want that to happen, they would just click yes. Um, however, you still would have to fill out um, LCSC's application. This just lets us give them a list of students that maybe didn't get in here um, that may want to get into their program. The next section is all those prerequisite courses that Jacob covered for you. Um, again, they all must be completed with a grade of C or higher, no C minus. Down here, this, let's go back a little bit. So if you have earned um, a bachelor's degree or a master's or doctoral degree, um, you will click this and what will happen is it will bring up it says I need to find it. Yes, I've completed a bachelor's degree. Okay, so there might be a little issue with this version of the application. So I'll tell you what it will do. When you click that, it's going to bring up another um, spot for you to put in the courses for the prerequisite courses. So down here, it, okay, this is where it's at. Sorry, guys. <laughs> um, if you've already completed your courses at Boise State, you do not need to fill this out. But this is where you would say, yes, I've completed um, bio, biology 227 somewhere else. And so say I've completed it at CWI. You're gonna put in at CWI, it's still bio 227. So you'll put in there bio 227. Um, you'll put in the school, how, how many credits it was and your grade. And then you'll also put in how many times the course was attempted. And this needs to happen if you were a second degree, if you've completed a bachelor's degree, because Boise State Admissions and Registrar's Office will not bring your courses in, so we will not already have that. And this helps us um, when we're going through your transcripts know which grades are counting towards your application. Um, this part, prerequisites in progress. So any of those three courses that um, Jacob mentioned, if you have it in progress, as you can see, when I click that box, it opens right here, um, where you can, again, put in the course, subject, catalog number, and the university that you took that course. This is for everyone, whether you're second degree seeking or not. Um, and if you do several it, you know, if you have all three, it'll give you a spot for all three. If you don't have any of those courses in progress, you just simply check the box. I do not have any courses in progress. Um, anywhere that it asks for proof of, so say you worked with your advisor and you have a course that doesn't transfer over clean and We've given you approval to use that course for your application. You and your advisors are telling you save this email to submit with your application. What you will do with that is after you submit your application, you will then email that to um, Boise State Admissions and 
those emails are in here. Yes, so courses were pre-approved by um, the student services manager. Right here in the application, you'll see nursing admissions at boisestate.edu. And that's the email that you will send any kind of documentation you need to send. Um, if you're an ROTC student and you have an ROTC letter to submit, you'll submit it there. If you attended a nursing program at another institution, you'll submit your letter of good standing there. And um, if you have prior course approvals, you will submit those there as well. Um, and then the rest is you just read, read the application thoroughly, it gives you a lot of information. And you click I agree and electronically sign the application. Quiet. Once we get to the bottom of the application, you're going to see a big orange submit button. But then you also have this blue link that says save and continue later. I highly recommend you click save and continue later and it'll bring you to this page. It will not say private when you're doing the actual application. Um, so you're going to put your email address in there and you're going to send that link to yourself. That link it's very important. You're going to need that link when it's time for you to submit your application. That's where you go back to resume that application. Um, you can email that application to either Britta or Ellie, your academic advisors, so that they can review it for you before submission. Um, I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing. So Jacob, you can bring the slide back up. Okay, so I showed you that save um, and submit. So I, I really highly re recommend you save your application and you send it to your pre-nursing advisor um, to review. So you've completed it and you've sent it to your academic advisor. Um, please remember what I said earlier, apply early. Um, you want to give your academic advisors up to two weeks to review your application. Um, once they review your application for you, then they'll tell you, hey, it looks good or you need X, Y, Z. Um, but once you get that green light from them that it looks good, then you'll go back into that link. You'll submit it. Please remember your advisor will not be able to submit that application for you. Okay, next slide. So you've completed and submitted the online application. You paid the $20 application fee and turned any documentation to nursing admissions. Take a deep breath. Phase one of your application is complete. The next thing you will do is watch your Boise State email for um, emails from nursing admissions with questions about your application. Um, emails from nursing admissions letting you know whether you will or will not proceed to phase two. Or emails from Kira Talent, which we'll get into a little later, um, with your invitation to, re to interview. Next slide. So before we go into the details of phase two, I just wanted to kind of lay out the flow of the application process. Um, that first little orange button um, shows, okay, the student has submitted their application. The next, the next thing that happens is you will receive confirmation. If you receive a receipt and confirmation of your application, which it usually, it will send you a copy of your application in that email confirmation, then you can rest assured that we have your application. Um, at this point, School of Nursing begins reviewing materials. Um, after we review those materials, we determine whether or not you are qualified to move on to the next round. Um, if you do not meet that um, GPA requirement, 
um, if you're missing materials and we reach out to you and we don't um, hear back or we reach out to you and you don't have those materials, um, then you will be not qualified and that ends the process. At that point, um, you will meet with your academic advisor and determine um, what you can do to be prepared to apply in the next cycle. Um, if you are qualified, then you will um, receive a link from Kara Talent to start the phase two of the process. Um, phase two, um, as we'll get into deeper in the next slide, but um, you will have a, an interview. After that interview process, then the faculty will review um, all the interviews. So several faculty will review um, all the interviews and then a faculty committee will meet and select candidates. And then the end of the process is decision letters being sent out to students within six to eight weeks from the deadline of the application. Again, that deadline of this application is March 1st. Okay. So at this point, you've moved on to phase two of the application. Congratulations. Now it's time to interview. We will be using a software called Kira Talent. Um, assessing applicants in Kira Talent helps our admissions team mitigate the impact of bias in the admissions process. Your responses will be independently evaluated by multiple reviewers who will assess your strengths using competency-based criteria, criteria and structured rubrics. This process not only ensures consistency in the way that we assess and score our applicants, but it also means that your success doesn't rest on a single reviewer. The phase two invitations will be sent out each Monday through the application cycle. That link will be live until 11.59 p.m. the following Wednesday. Please note that if a holiday falls on a Monday, it will be sent out on Tuesday and live until 11.59 p.m. on Thursday. No late submissions will be allowed. You will have that 10-day window. So again, that's why I stress that you watch your Boise State email. Um, if you do not meet the deadline, you will no longer be qualified and you'll have to reapply the next semester. The invitation um, to interview will also walk you through setting up your account and testing your equipment. Please do that as early as possible when you get your email. The, this phase will consist of six timed interview questions and one short timed writing portion. Again, please do not wait until the last minute to complete this phase. You'll want to test everything as soon as possible, because if you have technical issues, you will need to contact Cura Talent directly. Boise State Help Desk, as well as the School of Nursing staff and College of Health Science Advisors do not have the ability to troubleshoot technical issues in Cura Talent. Once you complete all phases of the application, you can expect to hear your status within four to six weeks beyond the application deadline. And again, for this application, that is March 1st. Thank you. Awesome, thank you, Candice. And I will throw it over to Kelsey to talk more about interviewing strategy. Wonderful, thank you, Jacob. Hello, as I mentioned previously, my name is Kelsey and I work with Boise State Career Services. Our whole job is to support you as you go through things like this and really anything related to jobs and careers. Now there's an interview added to this admissions process and this is something that I'm personally very excited about and I'm excited to support you as you prepare and navigate for this process. One thing that I'd like to start with is that interviewing is not about memorizing answers. It's about practicing how you articulate your experience because really there's no way to know exactly what you're going to be asked 
Um, but you do have time and you can prepare by doing research on the profession and in a way research on yourself as it relates to the profession. So because of this, I highly, highly, highly recommend that you take advantage of the time you have to prepare for this application process. Today, it's been broken down into a few steps. Now, first off, shortly, you will uh, have a document shared with you that was created to help you with phase two of this process. Please, please, please review this document. Um, don't just give it one quick glance, look at it, read it, look at it several times. Um, today, I'm giving you a 20,000 foot view of the content that's on this document um, and you will be able to access it. It looks like Mary just posted it in the chat. Um, so first off, I want you to start by reflecting. Um, now, I included some, some questions here in the presentation for you to reflect on, and these are going to be really important uh, for you in phase two. Although these might not be the questions that you're actually asked, they are going to help provide you with a strong foundation to help you articulate why you want to go into this profession. So the first thing I want you to think about is why are you even interested in becoming a nurse? And please don't stop it to help people. Um, and of course, that may be a big motivation of yours. However, there are lots of professions that help people. Um, so I want you to think about why are you specifically drawn to nursing? The other thing I want you to think about is what do you know about the profession? Um, what do you know about nursing compared to any other profession in healthcare, whether that be respiratory care or um, being a physician, right? There are many different professions in healthcare. What specifically do you know about nursing? And what research have you done on the profession? That could be research you've done online, perhaps informational interviews. Um, I really want you to think about what do you know about the profession? The next thing is how have you prepared for the challenges that you're going to face in nursing school? And then finally, what skills do you have that are going to make you a strong nursing student and a strong nurse? I really want you to take some time and think about these questions um, and write out some answers to this. These aren't gonna be things that you memorize to share in the interview. However, I want you to be thorough about this and really think about um, how you are um, in relation to this profession that you're um, hoping to go into. The next thing um, I want you to do is be resourceful, use, your resources, you drive this process. Um, someone just put in the chat that says we need access to the document. Um, as soon as I'm done, I will um, put an updated link in there for you. So thank you for bringing that to my attention. Um, but uh, I really want you to um, use your resources for this because you drive this process. You have to take ownership of this preparation. Um, so on that um, document, which is one of the first things that you should look at, um, take a look at the document. There are other resources that are um, in that document that are linked. There are questions to review in there with strategies to answer. Um, there's also a link in there for a career services virtual workshop on interviewing, um, as well as information on how to get connected with career services for a potential mock interview. Um, but you have the time, so please, please, please use your resources um, and take the initiative and the ownership to start this process now. Um, the next thing is to practice. Um, like I mentioned, interviewing is not about memorizing answers, right? You have to practice how you articulate your skills and experience in relation to the position or to the interview. So what I want you to think about, or I want you to use are um, the interview questions and strategies that are on that document, um, as well as practice, whether it be in the mirror, maybe with a friend, um, practice in the car or in a mock interview with career services. Um, you don't have to just practice once before your interview. It's okay to practice multiple times um, because it is a skill. Um, Jacob, would you mind going to the next slide? And then um, finally, you have to understand the process of doing a virtual interview. Um, virtual interviewing is new for many people. Um, and although you are practicing how you articulate your skills, um, it can be a, a new process for a lot of people. Um, so I want you to make sure to understand um, the platform that you're gonna be using, which is Kira Talent, um, and understand how you're going to be interviewed. Um, so the interviewing worksheet does have information on this, but some things I really want you to consider are um, having a clean and organized background. For example, um, you probably won't be able to blur out your background or have another background like you can on Zoom. So have something that's not distracting to the person that's gonna be reviewing your video. Make sure to have your face illuminated. Um, make sure to eliminate any distractions for the person that will be reviewing the video as well as yourself. That means if you have roommates, let them know that you're gonna need that time to do your
Make sure to test your equipment. That one is huge, right? Make sure that your browser is going to work. Make sure that your internet works. Make sure that your video and camera are all going to be working and do this well in advance to the actual interview um, because you don't want those to be the reasons that you can't have a good quality interview. Um, and then the other thing to make sure to consider is to dress appropriately, um, which there is information on that worksheet about. Um, now, I know I've covered quite a lot of information um, and this can be kind of a daunting um, process to conceptualize sometimes. So my suggestion for that is to prepare and use your resources. Um, if you have questions, Um, and if you do want to do a mock interview with Career Services, please be advised um, that we sometimes will book out several weeks in advance. So if you do schedule a mock interview, it is expected that you have reviewed this interview strategy worksheet before you come to your appointment. Um, this is a great starting point for you. So make sure that you have practiced on your own. Make sure that you know the platform. You know what you're going to be um, doing so that way when you come in for a mock interview you are best prepared um, now that is all i have so i will get an updated link in the chat very shortly um, and please let me know if you have any questions about interview preparation awesome thank you so much kelsey that was super helpful really appreciate it all right so uh, moving on what now um, so uh, some things that you can do now to kind of get ready for this process is first off Please submit any and all transcripts um, that the admissions office may need. This includes any college transcripts that you have from other universities that contain college credit, um, or maybe you still haven't sent your high school transcripts in. Send in every single transcript that you need to into the admissions office. Um, please know that you may have sent an advisor a transcript, like an unofficial transcript. That doesn't count. Um, it, it won't count towards your credits. It's helpful for us to advise you, but in order for it to go on your transcript, you need to send an official copy to Boise State Admissions in order to get that accredited to your student account. Um, you can schedule an appointment ahead of time with the pre-nursing advising team to go over phase one of the application, um, or you can, uh, as Kelsey said, meet with career services to prepare for a potential interview. Um, you know, I would encourage you to just go ahead and book that appointment now if their booking links are open, um, because as Kelsey said, all of our um, kind of booking links kind of get uh, backed up a couple weeks in advance. Um, so be proactive, make those appointments ahead of time, and also allow for two weeks uh, for application review um, from either Britta or Ellie. Um, so give them plenty of time to review that application. Don't procrastinate in this. Take advantage of the time that you have and be on top of um, everything that you need to get done. All right, and for phase one, um, so your contacts are going to be Ellie and Britta. They are going to be ones that will help review your application. Um, uh, please note that um, if you have already earned a bachelor's degree, you will want to meet Ellie Pierce first, um, as Ellie has worked with students like this all the time and knows what to do um, if you've already earned a bachelor's degree, because there's some subtle nuances that are different um, that, that she knows about. Um, Second, for phase two, um, you can uh, work with career services. Before you contact career services, please use that interview strategy worksheet uh, before you reach out. Um, as Kelsey said, they, they get booked out pretty quick. Um, and using that worksheet can really help you to, um, maybe, you, maybe you get all the help that you need from that worksheet. Um, and um, yeah, and you can contact Kelsey at career services as well to meet with them to talk about um, maybe doing a mock interview or something like that. Um, and then also for phase two, uh, if you have questions about the Kira Talent software, um, we don't know, we're not very good with that software, um, so you'll have to contact Kira Talent uh, directly, contact their support um, as they, it's their, their software, so they'll be able to help you out with that better than we will. Okay, and we have a bunch of links here uh, that you guys can all access. Please note that we will be putting these this slide deck on our website shortly after the presentation, so you can access all of these links. I think we'll also maybe throw them in the chat, I'm not sure. Um, so we have first the nursing application link, and Candice, I believe you also wanted to go over the Kira Talent information link. Yes, yeah, so if you could just click that link. Yeah, um, yeah so, you guys will have access to this once we get it posted up, but um, go to this link and click through um, 
these links here and it will tell you a lot about Pure Talent. It will help you prepare for what's to come. Um, very good information and very helpful. And also, I don't want to scare you guys by saying, don't come to us, go to Cura Talent. Um, please know that their customer service is excellent and they will be able to help you if you have technical difficulties. So I don't want you to think we're just sending you somewhere and you may get help, you may not. Um, they do have really excellent customer service. Thank you. Awesome, thank you. And then we also have the link to our pre-nursing advising team. Um, like I said earlier, Ellie and Britta are going to be your main two contacts if you want application review. Um, other people on the advising team can help you kind of formulate a plan for the future. If you have questions about other majors, um, you can uh, contact our COHS advising office email. But if you really have questions about pre-nursing, um, come to Ellie and Britta first. Um, and then you can also contact me as well um, if you need to. And then we have career services link down there, as well as the School of Nursing website um, there at the bottom. All right. Well, thank you guys all for attending. We're going to now start the Q&A session. And I think we have quite a few questions in chat. So, Mary, if you kind of want to facilitate the Q&A, we can get started with that. Okay. Yes. Can everyone hear me? Yep. Okay, great. So we have a question from Tim. He says, this new entrance process is only for spring of 22 applications, not for the following application sessions in fall of 22 and beyond question. So Candace, would you like to respond to that? Yes, absolutely. Um, so this process is going to carry through, but we just like to preface the these workshops. We do one every semester. So just in case there might be a minor change in the next semester, or something, we, we just always like to preface that don't attend one workshop for um, an application, you know, a semester or two away because there may be some changes. So we just recommend you attend each semester you plan to apply. Great, thanks Candice. Another question from Lydia. Can you still apply in the spring of the 2022 cycle even if you're retaking a course? A green course. Uh, if you have an original grade, um, but you're retaking it to strengthen the admissions GPA. And Jacob, would you like to take that one? Yeah, sure. So um, as long as you meet the minimum GPA requirements of 2.5 cumulative, 3.0 admission, and a C or higher in every pre-nursing course, yes, you can still apply. Um, just note that the nursing program won't accept that new grade of the course that you're taking because you'll be in progress with it um, when you apply. So if you want to retake it to earn a better grade in the course, that better grade that you earn at the end of the semester won't count towards the application um, if you're taking it the same semester that you're applying. So um, yes, you can still apply, but it won't, the new grade won't benefit you on the application. Okay, thanks, Jacob. We have a question from Lillian that says, if I've completed prereqs elsewhere, but they're already transferred, do I still need to fill out that particular section of the application that asks for those courses? We'll have Candace respond. Yes, so, um, yeah, so that section mainly is for the um, post-baccalaureate students. However, if you've transferred courses in and they don't come in directly equivalent to the courses, you will need to fill that out and submit um, the email conversation where we've approved the course. But if they come in and they directly equate, you don't have to worry about anything. Okay, thank you so much. Um, Aaron asks, has a question about the video interview. It will be, quote, face to face with someone on the Cura software and not just a recorded video of yourself answering the questions, correct? So I'm uh, to rephrase the question, how will the interview be structured? And we'll have Candace respond. Okay. Yeah, so you will not be face to face with anyone. 
um, you will log in to do your interview and you will, um, somebody, you know, it'll be a recording will come up and ask you the question and then you will record yourself answering that question. So you won't be face to face with anyone, which actually kind of helps because you can do this video on your own time. You don't have to schedule a specific time with someone to do it. Okay, great. Um, Hannah asks, are there, is there anything we can do to make ourselves stronger candidates besides academics? Uh, for example, volunteering, certificates, et cetera. Well, um, all of that stuff is extremely helpful because that may be helpful to you in your experience and help you better answer your questions. Um, it won't directly count, like you won't get points for having that experience and stuff, but that experience will be very helpful when you are, you know, trying to decide how you're going to answer specific questions. Okay, sorry, thank you. This person has a specific question. Uh, the community college she's now attending does not have pathophysiology. Could she take patho in the spring at Boise through the online, do it online and is in progress for applying for fall? Um, I can answer that one, Claire. So we, that would be a direct advising question. You would want to schedule an appointment with a pre-nursing advisor to look at the rest of your coursework um, and after you've applied to Boise State and your transcripts have been evaluated then a pre-nursing advisor would work with you to determine where you're at in your timeline process. Okay Bella asks um, if I meet the academic requirements are you going am I going to get the chance to demonstrate an interview or are there only a selection of qualified applicants granted the interview? Candace. Yes, great question. Every single applicant that meets the minimum requirements will have a chance to demonstrate in the interview. Okay, thank you. Um, Anna asks, how does experience help in applying? An example being a CNA license. That experience will um, help you when you're answering questions in the interview um, because you'll, you'll have experience to draw from when you're answering those questions. And just to clarify, Candice, Prior healthcare experience is not formally counted towards the application, but it is helpful to be able to have something like that to draw on when you talk about when you go to interview. Correct. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, we have another question from Claire. How many students apply and how many are accepted? I'll yeah, throw that one to Candace again. <laughs> <laughs> um, so recently we've had sort of record number applications and we've had up to 220 some applications and we generally admit 80 students per application cycle. Okay. Erin asks, oh, uh, <laughs> So this, this workshop is going to be recorded again in uh, the spring for the fall admission panel, or it might be actually next fall for the fall application cycle. So like Candace mentioned earlier, we record a new admissions process each semester. Okay, let's see. Maddie asks, do you only have one chance for the interview or will you be able to redo your response? Great question. 
Um, when you are in, in the Kira Talent, um, getting your system ready and stuff, you get opportunities to kind of practice a couple times and then actually record and do it. So you do get a, a chance to practice. Excellent, thank you. Okay, Kaylee asks for the interview process. Does the CURA software group evaluate the interview or is it representatives from Boise State? Yes. Um, so it, it is our, our very own nursing faculty that will be um, grading the interviews. And they have, a, they have a rubric that they follow. And um, not it, it won't be just one faculty looking at one student. Every faculty will look at every applicant. OK, thank you. Um, T asks, uh, can we work with different nursing advisors throughout the application process, or should we stick to only one advisor? I can answer that. T, you can work with all the pre-nursing advisors if you'd like. So Britta um, and Ellie are our experienced professional staff with admission process in for the School of Nursing. So I would recommend that you reach out to them um for support jacob's been great he can also so help give you information along the process uh at the earlier stages of the process okay um maddie asks how much weight will the admissions gpa hold over getting admitted to the program yeah so um for the admissions gpa is we're looking at about 40 percent so it's a little bit of a change from what we're used to with our current application cycle where it is most strictly just admissions gpa um, now the gpa is 40 percent and then the other 60 percent is the interview okay uh, Abby asks, how many people are selected from phase one? And I believe, Candice, that, that was a question that was asked earlier. All students who meet the requirements will be invited to participate in phase two, correct? Correct. OK, great. Um, Nikki asks, oh, is there any discussion of increasing the amount of students admitted? <laughs> They, they would like a bigger cohort. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know, the state of Idaho would like us to do a bigger cohort as well. Um, right now, we are sticking with 80. We used to only admit 60 students um, each semester, and we did a pretty large jump to get to 80. And due to resources, clinical placements, and all those things, we have we are not in a position to increase right now. Thank you, Candace. Um, Isabel asks for the interview when the question is asked. Is there a record button for the response, or is it already recording and it's an immediate ask and answer? Yeah, um, so I believe um, this is definitely, I believe this is probably covered in all of that, um, Kira, those Kira Talent links. But if I remember right, you will be able to hit a start button to start your, um, no, no, it's timed. So when you hit the start button for them to ask the question, I believe it's timed. Yeah, I think they give, once they are ready to do the question, it will give them an opportunity to write prepare, a little bit of time to prepare, and then it will um, go over to the question following once the time is up. Yes. OK. All right, thank you. And Mariah asks, does our cumulative GPA contribute towards admission at all? That cumulative GPA um, 
is only for the minimum requirements to see if you are eligible to apply. So you have to have a 2.5 minimum GPA to apply. We are not um, counting that in the application process. Okay, thank you. Um, looks like Shania asks, does applying to the program previously affect you in any way? No. So you can apply as many times as you want? Yes. Okay. And then we have a couple questions or this from a couple people. How long does the person have for, to answer each question? And I apologize. I do not remember what timing is being um, set on that. I know that when you go in to set everything up, it will let you know all of that information up front. Okay, so it will outline mm -hmm. the details of um, the logistics of the questions when they are starting and creating their account. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Um, another question about what should we expect from the written question? That is, um, that is something that I am not sure. So the written question, I believe it's going to be short. It's going to be timed. That's really all I can tell you. Um, and they just want you to do your very best. Uh, Molly asks if they can be shown an example of what the written section will look like. Uh, we don't have any examples. It will literally, the, they will, it will have a question and then you'll write a response to it. Okay, thank you. So it'll probably, it, you know, it might look something like if you've taken your SAT or ACT and there's a written portion, they'll have the prompt and then they'll have an opportunity to start it and then the time will go um, probably something along those lines, but I, I haven't seen it either, so I'm not sure. Uh, will there be any medical types of questions or more questions just about yourself? This was by Jade. Mm -hmm. um, no medical specific questions. Um, they These questions, yeah, are more about yourself. They're, they're probably, probably going to be like behavioral based, like tell us about a time when, um, and just for you to draw on um, your experience. So I also want to point out that if you don't have any medical background, no, you're not a CNA, um, that doesn't mean you are not going to do well in this because you, these, these types of questions aren't going to be asked looking specifically for that. They are going to, they're going to be asking you to just draw on your experience and you can probably tie your experience into um, make it all, you can make it all work. I don't even know what I'm trying to say, just that you're not going to be at a disadvantage if you don't have a medical background. Gotcha. Thank you. So you're looking more for how folks are connecting any prior experience to their goals and experience with trying to become a nurse. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks. Um, Nikki asks, why did the department choose to make the switch to a more holistic application or approach? Yeah, so um, that's kind of something that came in from um, AACN, which is one of the governing bodies. Um, is looking at all application cycles and making them more holistic. Our application for many years has been heavily um, GPA based and we would like to be able to give um, more, more of an opportunity to students who, um, you know, just overall more, a better opportunity. And um, yeah, not focusing on one thing. We want to look at that student as a whole. Awesome. 
Um, there was a follow up question about how maybe the approach or the way that you the school of nursing is structured this how bias will be avoided or mitigated or reduced. Yeah, absolutely. So um, they are predetermined rubrics that um, the faculty will be using. Um, there are there are six different competencies that they're that they're grading on. Um, and there are six different faculty. So um, faculty number one is responsible for competency number one. They're going to review every single student in that competency. And so if faculty number two is responsible for competency number two, they will be reviewing every single um, competency. And they will be using that rubric to grade. And by doing that, if there are any like outliers, I mean, you, you would be able to see bias if there was like, whoa, this one was way off the chart. Um, but yeah, so basically all the committee reviews every single student. Okay. Isabel asks when the interviews are over and there's more than 80 people that could be accepted, what is looked at to make the cuts? So what is, what's the, uh, you said the admissions GPA is about 40%, I believe. And then I think you said that the phase two is about six, so it comprises the rest of the decision process. So hopefully that answers your question, Isabel. Um, someone asked, uh, for phase one, is it primarily based on admissions GPA? Is there an option to send a letter to the nursing admissions on why you would make a great candidate? Um, phase one is primarily that admissions GPA, but if you meet that minimum admissions GPA, you will move on to phase two. Um, you have to meet that minimum, which is that 3.0 admissions GPA, and also that 2.5 cumulative, which determines if you can even apply. But as long as you meet that 3.0 in those five science classes that Jacob outlined, then you will move on to phase two. Okay, so just to clarify, no, you will not need to send a letter. Use that um, opportunity for phase two to talk about why you would make a great candidate mm -hmm. um, when responding to the questions. Okay, let me see if I, uh, Anna asks if letters of recommendation will be considered. Not at this time. Another student asks, if you have taken a class twice, does that lower your chance? That does not lower your chance. If you have um, excessive repeats, like you've repeated this class like several times and you're still struggling to um, make the minimum grade, then that might be flagged. But um, no, repeating a class will not um, lower your score. Okay, I want to take just a second to see if we get any more, if we have any more questions in the chat, but we are, I think we went through all of them. Okay, and we are also at three o'clock. So um, I'm gonna hand this back over to Jacob to close us out and I'm going to stop the recording. So thanks everyone so much for your questions. Awesome, thank you, Mary. Uh, once again,